and here I'm just measuring those. We're going to use those to, to calculate the THD. So we sum the powers of the, the harmonics and divide by the power of the fundamental. And what we see for this grossly distorted waveform is 245% distortion. All right, next we need to calculate the displacement power factor. And what you can do is look at the phase of just the fundamental. We're interested in the fundamental because that's what provides the real work. The harmonics can't produce any real work. And what we see is that we have a, an angle of about 0.2 radians, and it's leading. You'd expect leading because you have basically a capacitive load. Uh, the the power, displacement power factor alone would give you pretty good power factor, 0.98. But when you derate it because it's grossly distorted, you get a power factor of something like 0.37. This is not good. <laughs> Okay, we'll look at the simulation of the active power factor correction now. It's the same input system, and we have added now uh, an input inductor and two active switches. The bus voltage we expect to be 300 volts. Uh, the load resistance has been changed because now we have a higher bus voltage. This is to give the same equivalent output power. We sense the output voltage. Now we're going to talk about the control loop. We sense the output voltage, and we have an output voltage reference. We subtract the two and we get an output voltage error. That is fed into a PI controller. That's a very slow PI controller, but the output of it gives a current reference to the inner current loop here. You don't supply just that current reference. You sense the rectified line voltage, scale it down, and modulate that, the current reference. Now this current reference after the multiplication block is proportional to the line voltage. So if you can instantiate that current reference, your system will behave as a resistor, basically. Then you sense the input current and subtract the reference off, and you get a current error. And then here you would place some kind of high bandwidth current controller. I've just used a hysteresis current controller here because that's what's available in VTB. Uh, but you could use like a peak current mode control, average current mode control, or something like a one cycle control. Anyway, the output of the current controller is directly the command for the switches. This could be a PWM unit or something like that. Now we'll look at the, the results. Well, let's talk about bandwidths first. The outer current loop, the outer voltage loop must be fairly slow. Basically, you have huge disturbances at the line frequency, the input voltage. Your outer voltage loop must be slower than that, much slower than that. Uh, your inner current loop, you'd like to be as fast as possible. You want to, to instantiate the current as quickly as you can. OK, now these are some simulation results. The first thing I'm going to show here is the output voltage. Uh, there's some initialization. Basically, the PI controller started at zero value, so you see a dip. But ultimately, the output voltage is held at 300 volts. The input quantities, this, the cyan is again the input voltage, and the yellow is the input current. And you can see it has some envelope related to this startup, but at every instant in this trend, it looks sinusoidal. We can zoom in on this. This is the input current. And compare this to the input current with just with no power factor correction. You can see it's very sinusoidal. There is some effect around the zero crossing, but it appears to be pretty much in phase also. So we'll take this into MATLAB and you can see the same thing. Note the symmetry now, and they're basically in phase. We can look at the spectrum again, and you can see the fundamental is approximately the same as it was before, but now the harmonics are greatly reduced here. We'll just measure them again for a THD calculation, and we see now a THD of 0.26%. So this is pretty much a sine wave. We're looking for the displacement power factor again. We get it from the phase of the fundamental, and it's a, a, approximately 0.1 radians lagging, so pretty much in phase. The displacement power factor alone would be 0.995, but since there's virtually no distortion, that is the true power factor. All right, let's compare the spectrum of, of both of the results. You can see, basically, that the fundamental is approximately the same. How much more harmonics are present without power factor correction? How, much, how, how, how good of a job the power factor correction does? 
and we'll compare it to the IEC limits. This looks a little jagged because there are lower limits on the even order harmonics, but we don't have any of those here. What you can see is that the, the converter with the active power factor correction would meet the IEC limits, whereas the one without would fail. Uh, this is not particularly uh, important in the U.S. because there, as far as I know, are no strict limits on input current harmonic at these low levels. Uh, but the IEC is an international set of limits. So if you want to market this worldwide, it's a good idea for you to try to meet this. So uh, you add a little bit of expense with this converter and control, and then you can sell it to a whole worldwide market. You may end up benefiting. To so summarize, high power factor requires low displacement and distortion, and the ACDC rectification is a challenging case that we were able to meet with this power factor correction scheme. Uh, and we talked about the importance of the IEC limits. Okay? Any questions? Could you go back to the slides? That, there were two slides that had the results with um, um, using the you know the next one I think keep going yeah that one those two yep and um, comment on what the, the there's some very fast transients in the current that look a little bit different on the next one when you import it into Matt sure, Lab, sure. Would you uh, comment on that a little bit. Sure. This simulation uh, is a <coughs> uses a hysteresis current controller. So basically, it switches infinitely fast. There's no fixed switching frequency here. Uh, it, it's based on the time step that you set for, for VTB. You set upper and lower limits. It's on what you want the current Correct. to be, and it switches whenever it crosses those Correct. limits. So, in uh, case you don't know. Right. And I just exported a limited set of these data points to MATLAB, so you don't really see these effects. You really should export more. Um, this may not may be less of a problem if you use a fixed frequency PWM. You could really... If you did, you would see the switching frequency, yes. though. Yes. Um, this is somewhat easier to filter out. This may be a problem, all this ripple that you're talking about on meeting EMI requirements. Uh, you could, since this is sufficiently high switching frequency, uh, it's a lot easier to filter, okay. so you could. What's the bandwidth of your fast loop, the current loop? You like remember? I said, it's a hysteresis current control, so it should theoretically work at VTB's time step. Uh, the outer current loop is something like one hertz. It's really slow. Uh, for a control system standpoint, you would want to make the inner current loop at least a decade faster so you don't have interactions between the two loops. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. These devices are beginning to be um, become commercially available to some extent, and uh, I think the in the future you'll see a lot more of this sort of thing. Uh, it kind of if everybody was using this, it would put the power quality experts out of business. <laughs> of course, there's some expense associated with it, and so in not all applications you'll be able to afford to do this. But even if you had relatively low bandwidth on all of your control loops, you could still get rid of the low order harmonics with this approach. And if it leaves some switching frequencies and some higher harmonics, in general, that would be relatively easy to filter out with some passive components. So if you, if you think about this, you could also use it in other applications. You can, in fact, use it to build nothing but a filter, you can, uh, a so-called active filter, where you just have the DC capacitor and all it's doing is serving as an energy storage device. You're not actually feeding anything off of that converter. So you could put that in if you had an existing installation that was having some harmonic problems as well. Uh, put in a relatively small converter to get rid of some of the low order harmonics. So I think you'll see more of this becoming available in the fairly near future. Um, were there any other comments or questions? That was a nice presentation, Adam. Thank you very much.